I am really happy to uh, be bringing some positivity into uh, the atmosphere today uh, with our, I'm going to say our umpteenth installation of the Marcus Graham Project, the I Create Summer Boot Camp. I don't even know what number we're on anymore. I just feel like we're just doing what we do. So um, uh, without further ado, I just want to say thank you all for being here. Uh, this is obviously different. Uh, we're used to doing this in person. Spent the last couple of years at, at uh, Fossil, and now we are um, in front of you all via uh, the internet and the World Wide Web. So uh, this is different, but I think this is incredible. Um, uh, the way we've been able to pivot like so many other great organizations, but the way we've been able to pivot, pivot with this program and the individuals that we are having the opportunity to present to you all and present themselves to you all today have been phenomenal already. So um, myself, Larry Yarrell, the Chief Operating Officer of the Marcus Graham Project and my good brother Lincoln Stevens just want to tell you all thank you for taking a moment to hang out with us today and uh, throughout the summer and we look forward to creating something incredible with you all. Absolutely, thank you Larry and and you know, one of the things that we always get excited about because of the nature of how we run our program in building leaders. Uh, if I could take uh, uh, something that my good friend Julian Duncan and our board member Julian Duncan shared the other day is uh, creating warriors. So we've created uh, 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 a program where warriors can come in and get um, their skills sharpened, iron does sharpen iron, right? Um, and so one of the things in this time, in this unprecedented time, uh, as the team has shared with us, we need unprecedented creativity. Um, and so in challenging every cohort to create their own agency, this team has taken really the bull by the horns, uh, as we say here in Texas. And um, what you'll be seeing is the launch of the Marcus Graham Project's uh, first fully functional um, virtual agency. So without further ado, I'd like to say uh, congratulations to our team and, and good luck. Thank you so, so much Lincoln and Larry for that introduction. We feel so blessed to be here this summer. Team look alive y'all, we are so excited. Um, and before we hop in, please, Everyone, go in the comment. Let us know where are you from, where are you hailing from, what city, what state. You know, throw your flag up in there. Also, I am Haitian, um, so I would definitely represent 314. I see it, St. Louis, Dallas, Cleveland. I love it. I love it. Chicago, 216, India, Columbus, NYC. Yes. Thank you so, so much for joining us. London, Nigeria, where are my Nijas? Thank you, thank you, thank you. This means the world that you all are hailing from all around the world to join us this afternoon. And from our agency to yours, I hope that you are safe, you are healthy during this time and you are with those um, that you love. We're here to elevate your voices. So thank you for being a part of this with us. Um, just to give you a little idea of what you'll be experiencing this afternoon, um, we'll be going through our brand manifesto um, talking through the reason why we chose our name, which you'll hear very soon. We'll also talk about how Simon Sinek has inspired the creation of our mission. Um, and then we'll get into our pillars and capabilities, what makes us special, what is our unique value proposition. We'll also be talking through the key channels that we'll be sharing our messages. Um, and then we'll close with our vision and where we hope to see the industry 10, 20, 30 years from now, because we are the culture and we are the future and the future is now. And then we'll give you the opportunity to ask your questions. Um, the questions that you'll have, please make sure you leave them in Zoom. We'll get to the, the question answer part in Zoom. We'll get to them at the very, very end. Um, but thank you so, so much as we get into our presentation. At the crack of dawn, a young marketing strategist takes the train 45 minutes north to downtown. You watch the people pile on and none of them look like you. And as you're making your way down each block, passing each billboard, it tells a single story, but none of them 
none of them belong to you. By noon, you think maybe your story just doesn't exist in this world and maybe it doesn't matter. That every story told before you stereotypes your identity or just buries your existence. And somehow your experience has been distorted. But let's make that clear as day. The industry has had all morning to get things done, but now it's up to us to get things moving. Q, afternoon agency. And for those that can't be defined by a single story, we got you. We see you as brilliant as the afternoon sun. And you have so many stories, and so do we. In fact, your complexity does not scare us, y'all. We embrace it. At afternoon, our days are defined by challenging the status quo. We break barriers and move mountains for breakfast. And for lunch, we take stories with missing pieces and make them whole. That's why we believe that unprecedented times call for unprecedented creativity. And in this 13th hour, we will not be silent, period. And while some call it revolutionary, well, we call it Monday afternoon. We are Afternoon Agency. Our agency name was born from the 13 of us diverse marketing aspirants coming together in this 13th hour to make a change in the industry. We realize that on a 24 hour clock, the 13th hour starts the afternoon. Other industry professionals have had the first half of the proverbial day um, to make diversity and inclusion and representation a priority, but none have really pushed the needle far enough. There's also a ton of symbolism around the number 13 in addition to the 13th hour. We consider ourselves the lucky 13. Buildings all over the world skip the 13th floor because of some superstition or fear, but as an agency, we've taken it upon ourselves to change the narrative in that story and many others as well. 13 is also really, really strong. It tells a story of resilience and change in the face of opposition. One final touch that means so much to us as an agency is the fact that the 13th Amendment ratified in 1865 abolished slavery in the United States. At afternoon, we never want to forget our country's tumultuous past when it comes to things like slavery, voting rights, and the ban on gays but we refuse to allow it to define our future and ruin our afternoon. I would also like to submit to the record that this is MGP's 13th year, uh, the best year thus far. Um, so it just makes so much sense. Absolutely, Rashid, I completely agree. <laughs> so in understanding our agency, we felt it was appropriate to borrow a concept from Simon Sinek, as Makisha mentioned, known as the Golden Circle. And as such, we started with why. Very few organizations know why they do what they do. Many will say it's to make money. However, that's just a result. The why is your purpose, your cause, your belief, the very reason your organization exists to begin with. At Afternoon, we exist as culture catalysts, providing a true representation of our ever-changing population. In everything we do, we believe in rising to the challenge of disrupting an industry long due for disruption. An organization's how, on the other hand, is what makes them special, what sets them apart. As incumbents in the industry, we use a people-centric approach to help our clients curate authentic stories that celebrate intersectionality. And finally, every business on the planet knows what they do. It's the products and the services that they provide. At Afternoon, we offer branding and, and integrated marketing services. And so in, in combining our why we exist and how we exist, you can observe our mission statement on the screen. We exist as culture catalysts because we believe in moving the culture forward in everything that we produce. By providing a true representation of our ever-changing population, we can democratize storytelling and our people-centric approach empowers us to do just that, to focus on stories instead of statistics. In doing so, we curate authentic narratives that truly and authentically celebrate intersectionality. When it comes to our pillars, we don't want to leave, excuse me, uh, the values that our agency upholds um, are just as important as our mission and our why. Uh, we chose four pillars that are the foundation of our organization that prop us up, 
so we don't fall um, and serve as guides when tough decisions come our way. Afternoons Agency's pillars are as follows. We are curious. We never stop learning. We believe that mastery begins with insatiable curiosity, a thirst for knowledge that can never be quenched. So we stop at nothing to produce the most impactful work. We are visionaries. Big picture thinking drives our strategy. We're extremely stubborn on our vision, but flexible when it comes to the details. We are audacious. We're willing to go the extra mile if that means making bold moves. We embrace shaking the table every now and again if to ensure that the story is meaningful and authentic. And lastly, we breathe vitality. We promote active imagination and spirited discussion. We consider our energy to be kinetic, constantly pushing us forward to discover profound insights and ideas. So we provide a wide variety of digital marketing tools ranging from web development and design, social media strategy and content creation. Each creative produce flows through a cross-functional process to ensure all pieces are on brand with our client's target audience. But this is not the heart of what we provide. We are our own unique value proposition. As an agency, we have a high level of cultural fluency considering our 10 plus languages spoken. Our work is authentic and culturally relevant. We are 13 young, minoritized, socially conscious individuals, and we acknowledge our perspectives as culture catalysts. To each creative we produce, we start with real people in mind. What are current topics relevant to individual communities? How are lives being affected? And then we utilize conceptual thinking and personas to determine touch points with our target audience. And so any diversity and inclusion ad can provide representation, but we keep relevant content in mind. Our company culture is heavily influenced by the culture and the feeling of the afternoon. You're winding down for the day, you're getting off work and breaking away from being confined in your workspace all day. You're meeting with people for a happy hour to share stories. And we want our work culture to reflect the easygoing but productive nature that focuses on the connections between people. At afternoon, we wanna encourage individual complexity. We make it a daily habit to push each other to the fullest potential by challenging one another's perspectives and always striving to create our best work. Not only do we value diversity in demographics, but we value diversity in skill and diversity in thought. At our core, we're more than just work. We're a collective of creatives that share a common vision. Every single word, detail, and emotion evoked by the work that we produce is intentional. Our culture doesn't just stop when we hop off of a call. It's carried out in our everyday lives and it's apparent in all the work that we do because our culture is a lifestyle. Afternoon is made up of detail-oriented and highly ambitious brand activists with diverse backgrounds and skill sets. We're strategic thinkers and disruptors. In a rapidly changing and unpredictable industry, we're able to focus on our vision where others may lack clarity. We're not looking for instant gratification or to just stay on trend. In the 13th hour, we take over because simply keeping up isn't enough. For us, we wanna create things that are long standing, that open up new perspectives and break down barriers. Being strategic thinkers speaks to our pillar of being visionaries, always stubborn on our vision, but flexible on the detail. Afternoon is the culture. We're young, vibrant marketing professionals, and the culture is a product of who we are and our existence. And that's our single best creative competitive advantage. As the people who drive the culture forward, we're constantly influencing the media and the trends around us. The future of this industry is changing quickly. And using this insight into what's happening and applying it to our work, we're able to mend the disconnect between clients and consumers and strategize ways to deepen that understanding. We understand that media is a means of cultural effect cultural reflection and expression of changing societal attitudes. To influence the images that we see and the words that we hear is power. And we wanna use that power to make people feel affirmed, not alienated. We have the ability to create tidal waves and shift people's attention to what matters the most. Our key channels are LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube. 
The goal for these platforms is to essentially translate our brand pillars of curiosity, visionary, audacity, and vitality onto the social media landscape. We will do this through executing, executing our four fundamentals, which is creating a diverse online community, actively inspiring our audience, sharing resources with our community, and lastly, and most importantly, discussing social issues and relevant topics. We'll be using Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube as platforms to explicitly convey our brand persona through storytelling and original content creation. In addition, we'll use these platforms to construct the voice that participates in important conversations about culture and intersectionality. LinkedIn will be a place for us to engage with industry leaders who, like us, are advocates for promoting intersectionality and culture within digital media. This will enable us to build a network of diverse professionals and target potential clientele. Lastly, our Spotify and Apple Music playlist channels will be a medium for us to further serve our audience with weekly curated playlists and podcasts that embody our brand persona. Our brand tone is authentic, passionate, and approachable. Hence our so down to earth slogans, for the culture, by the culture, as well as real people telling real stories. We want to equip our clients with the tools to their consumers and give them insight into current cultural trends while using our platform to change the face and the narrative of the advertising and marketing industry. We will say the things others may be afraid to say and challenge one another to create the best outcomes. We are heroes. We want our voice to be of empowerment and uplift those who are not seen nor heard. So lastly, when it comes to our vision, we don't wanna leave anything up to interpretation. Our vision is to illuminate real stories and set fire to the status quo. The status quo and what's been considered normal in our society has really overshadowed the relevant stories that speak to the intersectionality within people. Furthermore, we always wanna use our platform to shed light on the gross injustices that prevail every day in our society. We are living through a moment in history that will shape the global landscape forever. We stand in solidarity with the Black community, and we find it a privilege to use this space to say things that others may be too afraid to say. Rest in peace, Ahmaud Arbery. Rest in peace, Breonna Taylor. Rest in peace, George Floyd. What is it you want me to reconcile myself to? I was born here almost 60 years ago. I'm not gonna live another 60 years. You've always told me it takes time. It's taken my father's time, my mother's time, my uncle's time, my brother's and my sister's time, my nieces and my nephew's time. How much time do you want for your progress? In this 13th hour, now it's our time. We wanna send a sincere thank you to everyone who is joining us from all the different locations everywhere around the world y'all are the ones that really made this special for us in this moment and hopefully y'all have a better understanding of who we are as afternoon agency um, we're going to start introducing ourselves in just a moment but before we do that and while we're doing that please become a part of our story Follow us on all the social medias. You got Instagram, you got Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, we're gonna add the handles to the chat in just a moment. Um, and as soon as you do that, also head over to our website at itsafternoon.com um, to stay relevant with all of our uh, blogs and podcasts that we'll have there. So without further ado, we'll begin to introduce everyone. Daniel, if you want to start, you can go ahead and then we will follow you. Hi, my name is Daniel and I'm from Arlington. My position is art director. Uh, MGP alumni also asks, how does the intersectional identity that you carry influence the way you move in the world? I think it pushes me to go across my boundaries by working with people who come from different backgrounds, cultures, and income backgrounds, especially as someone who comes from a low income background 
and went to a charter school and university with a really diverse community of students and teachers. Hey everyone, I'm Amara, or you can call me Marchi. Um, I'm a new graduate and I'm excited to take on this journey. My answer to that question would be my own personal story motivates me to give girls like me a voice who didn't have anyone to speak up for them when they were going through their personal struggles. So that's what I'll be doing. And um, I'm the social media strategist. And yes, I'm so happy to be here. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Andrew Bay. Uh, I'm based in Toronto, Ontario, uh, Canada at the moment. And uh, I'm a uh, Christian. And how the intersectional identities that you carry influence the way you move in the world. So for me, I'm a South Korean born Canadian. I immigrated to Canada from a very young age. And it was a struggle, like cultural shock and everything, but I went through, and that's like the beauty of living in North America. So with that said, my past experiences, where I live, people I met, what I look like, maybe who I am, and I hope to help others either who went through the similar experiences, as well as uh, sharing my knowledge and wisdom to others. All right, so my name is Carl Blevins. Um, I am from Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm proud to be from there. Um, I am one of the brand managers for this agency. Um, and in response to the question previously stated, hello. Um, how does my intersectional identity influence the way that I really navigate through this world? Um, yeah, let's go for Cleveland, yes. Um, I truly believe that my identity as a Black man and as um, a Christian man and all my other identities really add a different narrative um, to what people would otherwise assume of my identity. Um, and I walk, uh, I walk in that, yeah. What's up, y'all? My name is Andre Kane. Uh, most people call me Dre Kane. I am in Dallas, Texas, and I am on a social media strategy team. Uh, me being on biracial descent, I have to be very intentional, um, empathetic, and vigilant in my day-to-day -day approach. Oftentimes growing up, I felt like I didn't measure up to society's standard of being Black enough or maybe even white enough. But my purpose is to break that standard and promote inclusiveness everywhere I go. Good afternoon. My, my name is Brandon Costello, but everybody just calls me Brand, like Raisin Brand. I'm based in Dallas, Texas, and I'm an art director for the Afternoon Agency. The intersectional ident identity that I carry influences the way that I move in the world because I'm a disruptive, for disruptive force that challenges the status quo. I'm talented in such a way that leaves people shocked for being such a powerhouse because I identify as a gay Italian Hispanic with an alternative style. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ryan. Um, I'm one that I am the only strategist actually on the team. And I am from Washington, D.C., which means I'm DMV bred. So if we have anybody from the DMV in the comments, just let me know. Um, I'm currently a rising junior at Georgetown University. And as far as my response to the question, growing up as a black man in um, the DC area, I was sort of expected to either be a rapper or be an athlete because I grew up playing sports and I'm, I'm quite tall. Um, and I just knew that neither of those were gonna be my path from a very young age. And so I wanted to get into media and entertainment to increase representation for little black boys that look like me. Bonsoir tout le monde, mon nom moi c'est Makisha Noel. Hi everyone, my name is Makisha Noel, speaking to the diversity that exists on this team. Um, I am born, I'm from Miami, born and raised, so if you're from Miami, put it in the chat. It might not be anyone, but that's okay. Currently living in the DMV, but I'm going back home to Miami in a few days. Um, and how I live out intersectionality in my everyday life, um, I'm a dark-skinned woman that is also Haitian, I feel very proud of representing the first black liberated country. So I walk around knowing that resilience is in my blood and I don't play that. So thank you. And I'm so excited to be a part of this team um, and to be 
just a rising leader in the marketing advertising industry. Hi everybody, my name is Anthony O'Neill. I'm from Chicago. Um, and how I, I'm a video producer for the team, but I also help out a little bit on the creative team. You know, I'm, I'm multi-talented like that. But um, so how I live out my intersectional identities is pretty much by having conversations, like especially with the time frame that we're in right now, I like to include, okay, Chicago, I see you. Um, I like to, to have conversations that press my creativity all around. So whether that's with my friendships, whether that's in the workplace, and I think overall that's going to force me to be a, a, a bigger and better creative. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Rashid Owens from Cleveland, Ohio. I am also a recent grad, class of 2020. We are out of there, wherever that air is for you. Um, super excited to be here. So happy that I'm in this space um, to celebrate all of this intersectionality that is on this screen right now, that are in these comments right now. Um, it is the most beautiful thing I've seen ever, to be completely honest. And that really speaks so much to me because um, my life has shifted so much recently and I'm in such a transitional stage in my life. And um, it really, it, it really speaks so much to me. And I'm so excited to use my platform to speak to those young Black boys, those young queer Black boys who, who have never had a voice. Um, and I'm so excited to do that along with these wonderful, wonderful, diverse people that I work around. So thank y'all. Hi, everyone. My name is Asa Pojman Ezanyulo. I'm a brand manager for Afternoon Agency. I'm going into my senior year at the University of Missouri, and I'm from Columbia, Missouri. Um, to answer the question, I used to always feel the need to prove something to everybody around me. I'm at a predominantly white and male business school. And when I'm in those spaces, I always feel othered. So I'm black, I'm white, I'm Nigerian, I'm a woman, I'm LGBTQ plus, and I've always been younger than all my other counterparts. So I tend to feel, yeah, othered in those situations. But on the bright side, it's made me overly ambitious. And much like Amarachi, I use um, my platform to upload, uplift the people like me. Hello, my name is John A. I'm from Kansas City and I am an art director at Afternoon Agency. Um, similar to Amarachi and Asa, um, as a Black woman who's, who aspires to be an art director, I know that there are very few spaces that celebrate me. Um, so I move through the world hoping to leave open the door for young women to come after. Hi everyone, my name is Jacqueline. I am a Ghanaian born, Middle Eastern raised global nomad currently based in Kent, Ohio. I am on the project management team of one. And I just want to take this time to just acknowledge my team. I have seen how hard they worked. Uh, but to address the question, I, I'm just more intentional about walking into a room with all my personalities, all my different identities. Um, I'm just tired of, you know, leaving, you know, my queer self out the door when I walk into a room with all my Christian friends. So I'm just more intentional about being myself. And that's just because I just want other people to just see me. Because when I was a younger girl, I wanted to just see people that look like me. Um, intersectionality was not really a thing for me. Um, but yeah, that's it. Now we're going to move into our Q&A section. Uh, we really wish we were, you know, with you in person to just talk. But we're gonna use this and we're gonna still be successful. So our first question is from Mark Somer. He wanted to ask project management, what are some things you have in place to streamline your workflow as you work from home? That's a great question. It's been a challenge. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, we've had the chance to you know, get to know ourselves, but we, we've had like, we have different project management tools. We use Asana and different tools, but my main tool is empathy and love just because we do recognize the fact that we're in an area, you know, we're not just in an area, but we're like, you know, going through a time where we are limited, but we're an agency without boundaries. So we don't let that stop us. So just tune it into our emotions, you know, love, empathy, we're able to work together as a team. So that would be, you know, one of the things working for us. We're also welcome to, you know, um, learning new things. So please drop your ideas in the chat on, you know, section. But additionally, we would also like to ask you to please 
you know, put your questions in the Q&A section so we can, you know, accurately answer your questions. So our next question is from Anthony Williams. He wants to know what clients are you working, what clients are you working, are you all working with this summer? That's a great question. So we're currently working with Deal House, Apple, and a few other clients that are, we don't want to like spill all the sauce right now. We're going to like, you know, let you know. Um, so just follow us on social media, you know, become a part of our story. And Sex was asking, how do you all think your experience as the first virtual agency will enhance your MGP experience? That's a great question, Sex. And I think you're tired of hearing me. So I'm going to throw this to my team. Um, Rashid, do you want to take this one? Ask you to me one more time, Jackie, one more time. I got you, Rashid. This is virtual <laughs> and we're going to make it work. So how do you all think your experience as the first virtual agency will enhance your MGP experience? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's something that we talk about often because no other agency has done this before, especially when it comes to creating something. We've had to create something over these past two and a half, three weeks, and we've never seen each other in person. So how y'all see us is how we've only seen ourselves. So um, it has impacted us greatly, but it has shown us that like the things that we look at as opt obstacles really aren't that big of obstacles. Um, we have we have a lot of a lot of passion that drives and a lot of a lot of things that we want to see happen in the different communities that we live in. So we let that overshadow the obstacles that we're that we're trying to overcome. Um, and I think it'll give us a we are our own unique value proposition, like we said. And the the more that we lean into this, the more that we you know take this moment, like everybody at home. So we trying to talk to everybody because everybody has time now. So taking that time to really understand that is gonna be awesome for us. So thank you for that question. You're welcome, Rashid. Okay, we have a second question from Jason Garrett. Being MGP's first virtual agency, how do we, wait a second. Being MGP's first virtual agency, how do you plan on breaking through the noise that feels so saturated right now during, due to a global pandemic? So I'm gonna read that one more time. Being MGP's first virtual agency, how do you plan on breaking through the noise that feels so saturated right now due to the global pandemic? That is such a great question. And it's tough, I'm in a, I'm gonna give that question to Ryan. Thanks, Jackie. I think it's a great question. It's something we're thinking about right now. What I will say, two things that, that I think makes us really unique, um, both in the industry and both, um, and also in the social media landscape, is one, um, in the industry, you have plenty of agencies who create um, diverse and inclusive stories or commercials and advertisements. But when you look at the makeup of their agency from the top to the bottom, that's not reflected in their agency. And when you look at afternoon from the, the officials, the executives, the founders of this agency, we all come from underrepresented backgrounds um, and, and diverse. We're all very diverse. And so that's one thing that I think allows us to cut through the noise. Um, and then the second thing is that, as we mentioned in our presentation, we are unafraid to say the things that need to be said. Um, and I think a lot of brands today, especially in the environment that we're living in, they're looking for ways to adapt and respond to um, the unarmed killings, the, the unarmed lynchings of black men in America and black women in America. Um, and, and they're not authentic and they're doing it in a way that protects their bottom line. And from the beginning, we've identified that uh, what we wanna do is to truly embrace these things, stand for diversity, stand for inclusion, um, and stand for equity, and we're unafraid to do that. And so I think those two things together will help us uh, break through the noise, if you will. Thank you, Ronnie. Okay, uh, so we're just gonna move on to our next question. How do you think that the current social climate will inform your social strategy? That is a great question. So when it comes to our current climate, we have, you know, intersectionality in mind. Um, we have, you know, we think about the fact that, you know, there are so many different people out here. We want to make sure that our, you know, we may, want to make sure that the society that we live in is accurately reflected. Um, so does anyone want to answer this question? I'm going to throw this question to Leticia too. 
Yes. So I would say it's just to keep on highlighting what is going on and the importance of what is going on. Um, right now, Black people are literally fighting for just to be equal. We want to be equal. We want, we're fighting for equality. So if we can use our platform to continue beating the nail on the head, to continue beating that dead horse, we're going to do so. Um, there's a point where you have to keep on speaking up to get your point across. And I think it's important for us to highlight that and make that a main part of our social strategy. And that sets us apart with other agencies as well. So just keeping, keeping on voicing our equality is what we're going to use as a social strategy. Thank you so much, Amarashi. Um, Ryan? Yeah, I just wanted to build off what Amarachi said. Um, I think many brands, what will end up happening is many agencies and, and, and brands will be upset. They'll be enraged for, you know, a few weeks, maybe this month, and then it'll slowly start to, to dissipate and to give away. To be Black in America is to be in a constant state of, of rage. You know what I mean? James Baldwin said, said it best. And so one thing that we always want to do on our social media is to translate that and to communicate that. We are enraged now, we will be enraged tomorrow, and in six months when the news cycle changes, we will still be enraged because this fight, it, it continues. So that's the only thing I wanted to add. Thank you so much, Ryan. We're gonna move to our next question from Anthony Williams. Can you all share any work that has resonated with you all or maybe that has not resonated with you? I can share it. So, um, the Google ad for Black History Month. Oh my gosh. That resonated with me so deeply because some of those people who are the mo most searched, I didn't even know. So for the fact that Google has this global platform and they literally highlighted us and highlighted the excellence that we exude as people, really, it brought me to tears because it's just like, People don't know these things and Google put that in perspective for everybody. And that resonated with me so deeply. After I watched that, I went and started writing down the things I need to do. <laughs> I need to get my stuff together so I can one day be like those people who are um, displayed on that ad. But yeah, Google, Google's ad really resonated deeply with me. Thank you, Murachi. Nakisha? So to speak to what we believe about challenging the status quo, so there are some brands who are who have put out messages that have resonated with us. Um, and I'll give an example of one brand in particular that probably impacted most people. Here is probably the video that Nike put out, um, you know, kind of speaking to speaking to what is going on. And this isn't particularly towards Nike, but this is to every single brand that has you know, hashtag Black Lives Matter or we stand with you or, you know, we're together. We found that that's not enough to just put together a really great message with music that probably pulls at the heartstrings. At first, it was really captivating. I was like, okay, they, they're onto something here. Um, but then I realized that they need to give more than that. Um, I want to know how much you're donating or not just how much you're donating to different organizations, but what are you doing within those organizations? How are you continuing to build the diversity within your company as well, because we can say that we have these fascinating messages. I'm sure you have great copywriters and strategists that are, that are on these things, um, but how does your leadership board look like? You know, is there diversity there as well? How are you building up the next generation of people and teams that are gonna reflect the world that we live in? And so that's what Afternoon Agency believes in, and we're not just going to take a nice message um, as the answer to our, to our problems. Thank you so much, Makisha. Now we're gonna, there's so many questions coming in and we're so excited to answer them. We're gonna hop to our question from Chelsea Barnes. You, you mentioned the significance of the number 13 many times in your origin story. Aside from the coincidence that the founding team is 13 people deep. Do you foresee a practical value driver in preserving this number of members, no matter what? I could see a case made that the nuance, authenticity, authentic, authenticity and intersectionality you have made so central to your vision has a magic number. 20 is too many, five is too few. 
Okay, that question was that question was deep. Um, so we're gonna definitely break that down. When it comes to our members, uh, when it comes when it came to like naming our agency, we did you know talk about the fact that what if you know we lose one person? What if one more person comes you know joins our team? But the reason why we stand on thirteen is because. No matter what happens in the future, this is the foundation of our agency. This is the beginning of our agency. We went through so much, you know, when it comes to naming our agency, staying up to, you know, build this agency. So even with an addition or even, if, you know, a subtraction, hopefully that doesn't happen. But like, even if that were to happen, this is the foundation of our team. Um, I really do hope that we answered that question. But I'd also like to throw it to a team member who would like to answer that question. So over to you, Rashid. Yeah, so something else that really resonates with that number is the fact that this is the 13th hour. So like, I, like we said earlier, other industry professionals have had, you know, the first half of the proverbial day to get it together and to make diversity, inclusion, and representation center and very important, but a lot of people haven't done it thus far. Um, so that's another piece as well to the fact that, like, afternoon agency and we we purposely didn't put the number 13 in there just to give it a you know a much more overall and rounded sound afternoon like it's it's a new day it's a new dawn changing of the guard those kinds of things but like jackie said this is the foundation of our organization it's 13 of us and if we grow beyond this 13 more power to us but we are the foundation we are the rocks that will hold this organization down all summer and to wherever we go after this so thank you for that question thank you so much Rashid. um so for the sake of time we're just going to move on to another question and this goes to art directors we haven't heard from you so talk about your vision behind the logo and and the look and the feel of the deck it was awesome. And this comes from Kevin Green. So I'm gonna throw this question to Anthony or Tony. So <laughs> this, this is a good question because we all 13 of us felt very passionately about so many ideas that we came up with. Um, it took us a long time to kind of like <laughs> finalize an idea. <laughs> but as far as um, the process, with art direction, um, we essentially broke down what afternoon meant um, into two different phases. So there was a half of it that felt very vibrant, very soft, very comf comfortable. And then there was another half of it that kind of tapped into the rush side of things that, that kind of followed people getting off work and kind of like being stuck in rush hours. So we, we wanted to find a good balance between both of those concepts. And um, with this logo, we thought that it was conceptual enough, but also touched on um, the vibrancy that we we want to resonate as a brand. Um, and so, as you can, you can see the concept of time, but it's not so so um, so so strong that you, it takes away from the other aspects of our brand. That helps answer a little bit more. But I'll let the other art directors kind of chime in too. Thank you so much for sharing, Tony. So I'm gonna throw this to Jonae. It looks like you're ready for this. So um, as far as our presentation went, um, when we designed it, we wanted to focus on showcasing our vitality um, and the intersectionality and creating a flow between all of us because we are all one team, but we're in different places. So um, that was something that we wanted to make sure we had down packed. Um, as far as the beginning of the presentation, just creating an opening with that story and showing real people and being able to um, see people's faces so that you can put those stories together. Um, that was something that was also very important to us. Um, that's all I have to say about the presentation. Andrew might have something else to say about his logo because he can explain it better than I can. It's, it's a really dope concept. Uh, apologies if I'm kind of glitching. My internet is not the best right now, but uh, about the logo. So um, it ex it's meant to be, the logo is meant to be a verse. Uh, it's uh, everything merging together and it symbolizes like a clock going past noon. Also like the rounded, sur rounded surface of the logo uh, symbolizes our, our uh, fluidity and 
intercultural uh, business event. And yeah, uh, that is pretty much it for the logo. Very simple. We try to make it very simple and all of the letterhead, all custom. Thank you so much for sharing, Andrew. Um, the internet is trying to work against us, but it will not succeed. So please feel free to email us at hello at its agency, at hello at its afternoon.com. Um, that's our agency email, and we will, you know, send that, you know, reply to you just in case you missed that answer. Um, Carl, do you have something to say about the question? Well, no, I was going to actually, I see one of our, the, the last question, if you wanted to read the last question that we wanted to read off. Wait, can you say that one more time? I was going to comment on the, on the last question I see here that we're going to, um, that we're going to read off. Okay. Is there a possibility that Afternoon Agency will, will also aid in the individual clients along with companies? It's Carl. I'm sorry, can you read that again for me? Is there a possibility that Afternoon Agency will also aid in individual clients along with companies? Um, I think as an agency right now, we are um, open to all clients that keep the work that we do at the forefront of what they do as well. Um, and as an agency, I think that it's important to acknowledge um, the pairing between a client and an agency and make sure that they both complement each other in terms of their philosophies and what they keep to be um, most, first and foremost, if you will, um, companies that value equity, companies that value diversity, companies that are audacious and who are not afraid to say black, we are um, making a stance for black people. Because in recent media, um, at least from what I can tell, it's almost as if that word is scary to say. Um, so we definitely want to be intentional in our partnerships being people who are prepared, come clients and companies who are prepared to be audacious in their stance. Thank you so much, Carl. Now, oh, there's so many questions and I wish we could just stay here and answer them. We're probably going to be here till like Christmas. So I'm going to just like, you know, go through a few other questions. Uh, we have a question from Mary O'Hara and she, she would like to know, or they would like to know, um, oh, they'd like us to talk about how launching our own agency impacts the long-term goals of racial justice in terms of building wealth and power. Wow, this is a great question. And we have, you know, a few panelists that would like to answer this. So I'm going to throw this to Nikisha and then Ryan. Hey, that's a very good question. Um, so we believe that we believe that when we build our own, we're able to control the narrative, um, and that when we do that, we can also speak truth to power unapologetically. And that's what we believe in is being audacious. And so the moment that we allow ourselves to be bold and uninhibited by what society says about Black and Brown communities is when we can really, really lead the charge. Um, and we also understand that in building agencies, um, entrepreneurship is going to be a part of that process as well, because economic justice, um, economic justice is a way to that freedom. So we thoroughly believe that as we are going even beyond the 10 weeks that we'll be able to um, work together, that this is something that we can continue to build long term for our communities. Go ahead, Ryan. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree with everything you said, Makisha. Um, the only thing I would add in sort of combining another question that I saw about um, what's the most audacious thing that we've done personally. This past semester at Georgetown University, um, myself, along with two other people, we started the Blacksa. And so for those who don't know, Georgetown's slogan is, is Hoya Saxa. And we, the, all the Black students have a group chat called Hoya Blacksa. And so the Blacksa is Georgetown's first and only um, completely student run, black student run newspaper and media outlet and media organization. And so in building off of what Makisha said, absolutely economic justice is a huge part of social justice. It's crucial, it's essential. And we have to make sure we have ownership in everything that we do um, to truly make, make, it, make it stick, make it last and make it ours. Um, and so Carl, I know you have something to say about this. So I wanna throw it to Carl. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, I actually just want to, you, you both pretty much summed, summed everything up. I wanted to add something really brief. Um, so we meet and we have our different stand-ups according to the day to kind of go over what the structure of the day will be. And um, a, a few days back, it was very interesting because we like to give historical perspective, um, something that refers to something that happened in the past on that day that we're meeting. And I find it very interesting that we talked about um, the Tulsa massacre, the Tulsa riots on a specific day that um, related to the burning of what was known as like Black Wall Street. Um, and so in considering this question, it makes me think um, it's pretty ironic that such a program, such a um, boot camp as this um, would kind of be launched and created um, at a time where it's almost the, uh, the anniversary, if you will, uh, of, of that specific right, it's kind of combating um, what was. We're trying to rebuild what has been dismantled. Um, and so, yes, there, it definitely goes with racial justice um, and it pushes the needle forward in terms of the power that we want to reclaim. And don't forget, don't forget that partnership piece, Carl. And I think Carl is one of the, definitely one of the people on the team that pushes that very often in terms of working together. That is the, our lifeblood as well. And we anticipate, um, we anticipate brands and companies wanting to partner with minority own business enterprises. And in order for us to do that in, in, in the conjunction with ownership, we believe that partnership is a way to do that as well. Thank you so much, Makisha. Brandon? Hi. Um, so I would like to consider that what we're doing today is planting the seeds for the future, because this is the thing that Lincoln has said in the past, that we aren't here to just move on and take regular office jobs. After this, all of us plan on taking those big power roles, the CEO roles. We aren't here to just be the norm. And I think it's really important for us with our pl platform to move forward and to combat racial injustice with success. Thank you so much, Brendan. Um, that was such a powerful statement. Um, on this note, we know that you have so many questions and it really like at this point in me saying this, it breaks my heart to say this, but we are again to that point where we'd like to wrap everything up. But like I said before, if you have any questions that you really want us to answer and we would be more than happy to answer these questions, please follow us on social media and also feel free to send us, you know, an email at hello at it's afternoon.com. So now we'd like to, you know, um, you know, yield the floor to Larry and Lincoln to end this. But thank you so much for tuning in and we look forward to interacting with you on our social media channels. Um, I'm almost speechless. I'm excited uh, about what y'all just shared with, with the world, with the universe. And I hope all of you that are alumni, board members, supporters that are still tuned in um, can just recognize and be so proud of, uh, of this group, what they stand for, what they believe in, what they won't stand for, what they want to believe in, um, the choices that they have to make, the choice that they made to say, hey, first of all, oh, you are moving it virtually? We can do that too. Yeah, we wanted to come to Dallas. Maybe some of you did, but we'll do it. We'll keep pressing forward. So that's tenacity. That is a spirit of achievement. That is excellence. Um, and so uh, excellent job of explaining exactly how we're moving forward. Um, we've always uh, at the Marcus Graham Project talked about the future of work and talked uh, about and believe that the future of work is making sure that you can, that anyone, no matter where they are uh, in Columbia, Missouri, or maybe they're in Jackson, Mississippi, they're spread out. They very much want to put um, their creativity, their ingenuity um, to work. Um, and so, yes, you'll definitely see this team of 13 uh, grow exponentially uh, through a network that we're launching uh, here at the Marcus Graham Project. We're going to be creating uh, a network where all uh, of us that have similar beliefs uh, and that our talent here in our industry can come together uh, in a way that we continue to uh, build economic power uh, and 
part of building economic power means that we have to be in one place and on one accord. And so we just look forward to that day because we know so many things are going to be poured out um, to us. Uh, we're excited about what's, what's moving forward. And hey, it's only Monday, but it's afternoon. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, yeah, can unmute, unmute. And thank you guys so much. <laughs> we love you all. We Make sure to follow us. Yeah. <laughs> it's afternoon.com. It's lit.